Let's go back to the future with this, the Mongoose m -Pass Duel, back because there are elements of this bike, like this wheel card that looked very much like something from a few years ago, but also the future with this tagging, Born in Dirt, that's a Mongoose ad campaign that I think is still going on. I'm somewhat confused, and you might be too, as we take a closer look, I said Back to the Future, because this bike is somewhat stuck in the past, but there are also a few features we only recently started to see on budget bikes, or big box bikes, and even that, somewhat of a question mark, as I believe this is only currently available at Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description so you can see what today's pricing is. It's been changing almost daily since I've been working on this video. Back to the Future, it's somewhat fitting that the Impasse Duel is almost a DeLorean silver, so buckle up, this is going to get weird, and you'll see right away what I mean with the whole past meets the future thing, right away being up top at the handlebars. These are super narrow, 650 millimeters. They're jutting out of a long stem and that old school tiny diameter. And how about these shifters, twist shifters, as in plural. There are two of them, a three speed friction shifter on the left, an indexed seven speed shifter on the right. Both Shimano Revo shift, you know, I don't think I've seen these on a non bottom tier mountain bike in quite a while. Maybe not Revo shift, but twist shifters in general. This grip pattern, a little different too. I don't think I've seen this on a mongoose bike. They usually have a honeycomb grip design. This is more of a tire tread look. More entry level circa 1997 meets the 2010s components. How about these plastic power branded brake levers? I find those even more interesting when I look at this stem. Yes, it is super duper long, but the visual quality looks pretty stout and not in line with plastic brake levers. Yet, well, this speaks for itself. The super long stem made it to the super high stack of headset spacers. Just pick any year. Like I said, between 1997 and the mid 2010s. Then of course, there's this head tube. Nothing wrong with it. It's just here. And clearly for a straight steer fork, this particular fork Branded element, but the top cap show it to be made by Zoom, which puts it one step up from maybe the lowest level of forks. Travel around 60 millimeters. Stanchions and seals, again, pretty much not the lowest level, but definitely budget. What I don't normally see on this particular fork, which I am familiar with, is dropouts having a quick release skewer up front. Definitely not what I expected when I gave this bike a first look, given the components that we've seen thus far. I'll even say the hubs too, slightly more modern, meaning the machining looks more refined. Maybe this wheel set, it's gonna turn the, okay. Those are rim brake channels, Yet another throwback to an era when almost all big box mountain bikes used carryover parts from other builds. Modern e-bikes can get away with this, but for a mountain bike it's just more weight, but they are double wall rims, so there's that. Wrapped around those are tires with a tread pattern that I don't think I've ever seen, or at least recall seeing. Sometimes these big box tires though, they can have shockingly good grip, so a ride will dictate my view of these, the size 29 by 1.95. Yeah, right back to the past, at least on a dual suspension mountain bike. How about the drivetrain? We already know this is a 21 speed from those shifters. It kicks off with pedals, they're alloy with reflectors. The crank arms also alloy, they're pro wheel branded as are the chain rings, the three chain rings. I didn't even bother counting the teeth on these. If you watch my channel, you know my thoughts on a three by setup with a generic derailleur. And some people actually prefer this over a limited one by setup. For those people, this might be welcome given that three by options have been slowly disappearing. Looking at the rear, we see a Shimano Torni bolted to a hanger that's made onto this frame. This is one of my no-nos on a mountain bike especially a dual suspension mountain bike with an aluminum frame. We keep jumping back to the past, even with this rear gearing. I mean, surely we're getting to the end of the 14 to 28 tooth freewheel supply. Apparently there's still enough left to make it onto bikes like this one. Yet I still struggle to mentally date this bike because I see something like this. The rear wheel is a quick release. That's not a given even on new big box bikes. And here's a look at the rear hub. You can see what I mean about the better than normal manufacturing. Top to bottom, I see a lot of better visual quality on many of these components. Look at the brake rotors, the brake rotors and the calipers for the mechanical disc brakes, rotors nice and thick, calipers well machined, even the quick release skewers. Again, front and rear, those look nice. But as is becoming a running theme here, this is a mixed bag, no doubt. Looking at the suspension system, specifically the rear shock, this is one of those commonly called, quote, pogo stick shocks. The cheap coilover, 
750 pounds per inch load rating. Not the lowest I've seen, which I think is 550, usually 650, but also not the highest. I think the XR Pro had an 850. The pivot system though, more than just a shock. For the Impasse Dual, well, there's nothing pivoty at the chainstay or seat stay junction. It's all up here. This suspension pivot system, unique for a couple of reasons. Number one, I haven't seen it on a bike at this price tier. And second, well, just this frame in general. I've mentioned 1997s to 2010s, but I don't even know if that dating does justice to this frame or exactly where it resides. Just know that it's unlike anything I've seen for Mongoose. If you like tubes, you might find this very appealing because there are tubes everywhere. I don't know which are for support and which are just styling. Don't get me started on that rectangular ending that just caps off the top tube. Ironically, the overabundance of tubes is somewhat muted with the refined graphics systems, and these are all stickers, so any one or all could be easily removed. This is an aluminum frame, so I know you're going to ask about weight. It's a heavy bike, 39 pounds. It's also a geometric throwback. The head tube angle, as I measured it, 70.5 degrees. It's actually right between 70 and 71. My meter was bouncing around. I'll put the other geo specs as I measured them down in the description. I think they're quite interesting and makes me wonder how this bike is gonna ride. Before we get to that, the last few components coming out of the mix of tubes, this seat post held in place with a quick release clamp. And this saddle, this one is new to me, or at least I haven't seen it before on a mongoose, black and silver vinyl with a wicking mesh shorts kind of fabric on both sides. It's not a bad look and hopefully it's gonna be comfortable. No dropper post provisioning and ironically with so many tubes I don't even know how well one would fit, but there is plenty of open area for maybe some external cable routing. And there are plenty of external cables. I am curious how all this is going to come together for the ride, and I've been surprised many times, but I also have lots of experience under my belt with many of these components. Though I have been spoiled by the big box bikes I've been reviewing since 2020, how am I going to do with a throwback component mix? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's out on the trail. Where pleasantly out of the box, I didn't have to adjust anything as far as shifting goes. The rear 7 speeds ride on. Now I did keep for the most part on the entry level trails the smoothest of the smooth. Knowing component limits a good way to ensure a fun ride on any bike and don't laugh as I force over a few hops. I'm just trying to get a feel for the balance of the bike. The verdict, less balance, more heavy. Also this pogo stick does have a benefit on trails like this. There's no camera stabilization on here. This is all the pogo stick. Rear shifting I've already said was perfectly dialed in out of the box. The front shifting I have my issue with front derailleurs. However, the friction shifter means the clicks are usually within a range, so you just have to find the right spot. It's there. Gear ranging of this 21 speeds, specifically the low gear, and I wouldn't think that my 7 or 8 speeds that I regularly ride would be better than this for the granny gear, but I did find myself pushing this up a hill. I haven't pushed up that hill in quite a while. Part of my inability to climb the hill though could be with this pogo stick because it does regularly come out of adjustment. That robs even more power and I found myself adjusting it quite often. What about gearing on the high end? Surely since the low isn't super duper low, the high will propel at rocket speeds. That's not really how a 21 speed drivetrain is designed. The range is more an abundant selection in the middle gears. So the top speed, while it is enough to have some fun, it's not geared to be blazingly fast, and this is about all I can wring out of it as far as top speed. The remarkable thing here though isn't the gearing, it's the smoothness. Again, I'm seated here, and you can see this is nice and smooth. Now it might not sound smooth, lots of clunks and clanks, even the smallest of bumps will make noise with the tourney but it's actually quite comfortable to ride. The geometry, well, that's all so dated, definitely not modern, but I can still have fun on this bike, and that's the ultimate measure. I could have more fun though, especially on the new green trail sections, where if I could get up more speed, the flowy humps would be more exciting, but the weight and the full suspension keeps this bike planted on the ground for the most part. Probably a good thing because the generic 1.95 inch tires with that tread pattern, okay grip for the most part, but zero warning before it gives way. Not really a problem though, because of the balance, and this is a statement I'm probably going to catch flack for the overall balance. What I mean is that with the narrow bars mixed with the drivetrain, mixed with the budget dual suspension, 
it does in its own way kind of balance out meaning for the most part it won't let you push it far beyond what it can actually do which is a good trait on a bike marketed towards entry-level riders as i've said many times before there is a bike out there for everyone what might not work for me might not even be my choice might be the bike that someone else adores as long as a bike is rideable and within expectations it can be a good bike for someone this can be a good bike for someone the impasse is definitely one of those bikes it's a unique design and its design i think that alone is going to attract someone that likes the look which to be honest is a large chunk of the mountain bike buying market most mountain bikes never even see the trail many people buy based on the look and this look definitely stands out an example of bike styling meaning a lot while I was out on the trail I had someone comment that it reminded them of their very first mountain bike when they were a kid just an adult size so perhaps nostalgia is the angle for the impasse duel for me it's a mixed bag I do kind of like this design and I like that there are some modern components and modern as in big box terms like dual disc brakes the quick release on the front and the rear wheels, the aluminum frame that, as I've said, definitely catches the eye, and that saddle, I like the saddle. That said, I will be honest. For me, there are way too many throwback components here, like the 21-speed drivetrain. While I will admit the component quality of the drivetrain, some of the other parts are a step above maybe the $150, $200 bikes that I normally equate them with. It's still something that I personally don't like, but again, some do, so this bike's definitely gonna find its owners. There's too much else available to tip me in favor of this. Here's some examples. Obviously, I've mentioned the 21-speed drivetrain, the budget suspension parts, the rim brake channels on the wheels. That's a major turnoff to me for a mountain bike, even though these are double wall alloy. It's still unnecessary weight just doesn't look good and these tires they're not mountain bike enough for me and by the way there really isn't much room for anything wider on this frame so these are gonna be about it at least for tire width and if you want to know more I think you could just watch this channel and find a list of what I think isn't a good selection for me but again that's for me I make these videos to give you a look at bikes so you can see what works for you somewhere out there there are people that are gonna look at this and think that is the bike that I want and that's a good thing there is ample selection of different bikes and a bike for everybody maybe the impasse duel is that bike for you comment below and let me hear your thoughts on this bike if this doesn't work for you as fate would have it there might be an impasse for both of us because there are other impasse models and i have some of those on the way so make sure you are subscribed and you have the notification bell active so you don't miss anything thanks for watching kev central and have a great day